Welcome to this talk. Uh, I am going to talk here about um, new advances in QIVI, um, about how you integrate um, functionalities, existing functionality, uh, into uh, Qt and in, then into your application. So Qt AVI is a module of the Qt um, Auto Automotive Suite. Um, so I'm going to have very brief slides about what Qt Auto is for those of you who might not know. Um, and then we're going to look at it a bit more about uh, what's in Qt AVI and um, how it can help you integrate your, um, build your own applications around Qt. Um, in particular, some of the new things that we are introducing in QIVI2 is um, some features around code generation to help you speed up uh, integrating uh, your uh, features. Uh, and then we're going to look also uh, towards the end of the talk at um, the tooling that comes around all of this and how it can help you uh, testing, uh, test your applications and um, um, basically accelerate your the deployment. All right. So what Qtoto, uh, what is it? Um, so it's a collection uh, of um, tools. I mean, it's a very bird's eye view of what it is uh, in um, uh, just a high level speak. There's um, the idea is to use Qt as the HMI for uh, applications inside um, cars. Um, in the automotive world, uh, so it's not only um, uh, sort of multimedia applications, but it might also be part of the cluster and all, the, all of this, uh, and take uh, basically advantage of everything that Qt brings for that, okay? So QML, hardware acceleration, uh, easy to use language, uh, things like that. Okay, uh, part of Qt Automotive Suite also leverages some other tools, so in particular, there's a multi-process architecture to let you coordinate uh, uh, multi-process and facilitate the communication between them. Um, there's um, also a reference implementation for you to give examples of how all the tool gets used. So for example, this is the, the Neptune UI uh, screenshot of it, uh, which mixes basically QML, Qt 3D, everything you can put together with Qt technology. Um, hopefully using uh, Qt uh, Automotive Suite. On top of that, it actually comes with a, a set of tools to basically make, you, make it easier for you to build your applications. So uh, there's a, an emulator um, so that you don't need to actually run your application all the time on a real um, car. Um, and there's also um, facilitators for you to de uh, deploy your applications uh, in the car uh, more easily. Okay, so that's all part of tools that come um, with uh, Qt Creator. And then there's also a higher level um, diagnostic tools. Uh, Gamma Ray is the, uh, one of the main tools that you can use for that, uh, which uh, comes bundled with um, Qt Automotive. Uh, and we'll see how it, that can help you um, basically make your applications, or debug your applications easier. All right, and the last component of uh, Qt Automotive Suite is custom SDK, which basically, when you have a whole team working uh, with a collection of libraries, uh, this will let you create an SDK, an installer, that helps you diffuse all your, uh, install the libraries in a way that's uniform for your whole team and make it easier to uh, install all the tools. Right, so this is just a screenshot of uh, um, the uh, emulator that you can use for Qt Auto. This is Gamma Ray in action where you can see uh, all the, the QML scene and how the overlays, uh, the different overlaying can um, help. Look at clipping, you can look at the textures. There's a huge amount of tools that we're not going to look too much in because it would uh, take all this uh, presentation that's uh, you know looking at state machines things like that so from a software point of view um, Qt Automotive way uh, comes with a number of components and the key thing we're going to look at today is this thing here which basically is a layer between your um, core libraries that drive um, the functionalities of the car and 
the QT layer that you need in order to uh, build your applications using um, probably QML, or you could also use widgets. So to do the HMI bit here at the top, you need basically to build this glue layer between the HMI and the hardware operating systems and the native um, libraries. Okay, so this is what we're going to focus on um, today. So Qt IVI, the principles are based in uh, defining features, so like climate control, for example, or uh, the management of the windows in your car, things like that. So things that are relatively uh, granular, small granularity in terms of uh, functionality. Uh, so it could also be things like media services. Uh, and the idea is that we need to provide a consistent Qt-based uh, front-end API for this, so that it can be easily integrated into QML application or widget applications. Uh, but we also want to make sure that we do that in a way that it's easy to plug uh, your actual libraries uh, to that talk to the actual vehicle. And in order to do in order to do that, uh, QIVI uh, implements a split front end back end uh, pattern. Uh, where you can have so a good consistent front end that can be integrated in QML, and then you can have a back end, back -end plugin that gets dynamically loaded when the application starts. And one of the nice features about that is that you can actually have multiple back ends, and we can see, we will see how that can be really um, useful. Right. So the core library basically uh, has um, abstract classes and that implement this uh, software pattern and this library. Um, and it has everything to handle the dynamic loading of um, the plugins, right? Um, and the last bit I was just mentioning is that this runtime thing, you can actually target multiple backend plugins. The reason you would want to do that is that you might have your official plugin that actually goes and talks to the car, uh, but um, when you're developing your application, you probably don't want every uh, developer to have a car next to its desk. So you're going to have simulator plugins that basically behave like the car, but um, uh, don't really uh, talk to a physical device. Uh, all of this basically is driven so that uh, it has a C++ and a QML uh, interface so that you can use it either for the core functionality of your car or in the HMI, QML in uh, HMI for your car. And then uh, QIVI uh, also offers reference implementations of how you might build uh, climate control or might build uh, multimedia uh, APIs for your car. So they're not intended to be reused in a real product, but just an example of how things uh, can work. Right, so that's just basically what I was uh, describing here. In terms of classes, things to look for when you're going to start to want to use QIVI to build your uh, own um, integrations. Uh, so QIVI uh, abstract feature is the base class for the front-end feature, so the front-end things like climate control. Um, and then there's a derived class called abstract zoned features. Uh, which is a feature that supports zoning. So, for example, climate control in uh, a lot of cars will support zones in the car. So you can set a separate uh, target temperature for the driver seat, the passenger seats, or the rear seats, and uh, things like that. Um, so the, the principles of something having a zone is implemented by this um, derived class, AVI abstract zone features. So that's for the front end. Um, the front end define an abstract API that needs to be implemented by any uh, valid backend, and the base class for these backends are uh, called services, and the base classes are IVI feature interface and zone feature interface. All right. And then the QIVI library uh, implements uh, this dynamic loading. So basically, when the application starts, you tell the, your components to go and look for the backend. If you're using QML, this is done automatically for you at startup. Uh, but if you're using C++, then you have to start the discovery. And then basically, uh, this has a number of rules to look for either a production backend talking to a real device 
or a um, simulator backend that just basically has some mock values that uh, it will provide to the front end. Okay. Um, so uh, features, so the front end uh, bit of things, there are fully um, uh, qualified QT classes, okay? So the base class derives from QObject and they need to be good QT citizens in terms of providing properties, of providing, uh, providing setters and getters for those properties, of um, emitting uh, signal changes, of potentially having invocable methods that you can then, that will trigger behavior on the back end, that kind of thing. So what we're doing here, for example, if we were going to implement a climate control, uh, we would have a uh, property for the span, fan speed, uh, and we would have to implement um, a getter for that and implement a setter. Uh, and what the setter does basically is that it goes and um, tell the back end that um, well, the new value has been set by the user for the fan speed. All right, so that eventually needs to trickle down, that notification needs to trickle down to the back end. So the back end will eventually talk to the car to actually change um, the uh, speed of the, fa of the fan. Um, and uh, it may also perform some uh, validation, okay? So there's often, for a lot of these values, there's going to be valid range and possible um, correct values and things like that that the back end will need to, um, to validate, okay? Uh, but if the validation passed, then eventually is going to hear there's some missing piece of code where it needs to go and actually talk to the hardware. Uh, but once it's done, it's going to uh, emit the new value of the, of the um, speed level, which means that the front end um, in return needs to listen to the changes from the back end because um, uh, it needs to lit yeah it needs to get the final value that was actually accepted by the back end. They might also have some other process say the, the climate controls is in automatic mode at some point the car may decide to change the speed of the fans and they might the back end would emit a new value so the front end needs to also listen to that, which, and then it emits, the front end emits messages, which means your API, all the display in your API will get updated for you, okay? But that's regular QT proper implementation of your classes with, with um, properties and chain signals and all that. Um, a quick note on zone features. <clears throat> so um, some, Features can have uh, can be zoned entirely, or have some of their um, individual properties zoned. So, in this again, looking at uh, climate control, uh, you would have different target temperatures for the front, uh, the driver seat, or the passenger seat, and maybe the back. Uh, but you would have uh, so that means that these this the target temperature needs to be zoned and have different values depending on what zone you're talking about. Um, but uh, some other values may not, like for example, if air conditioning is on or off, it tends to be global for the whole, whole car. Okay? So uh, if a uh, given feature supports zoning, um, it derives from IVI abstract zone features and it needs to return the list of available zone, that being just a uh, string list. Sorry? I'll take. Uh, maybe at the end. Um, <clears throat> a zone, so um, for a given zone, you need to get the instance of the front-end object that covers that particular zone. Uh, and basically, you do that uh, once you create the, the single overall uh, controller for, um, uh, for the feature. You can then get a, partic a particular um, a control for a specific zone, which will then let you change the target temperature, for example, for that one zone. Okay? Now, in terms of zoning features, that means that the front-end classes have multiple instances. There's a, an overall object, and then there's one per zone. 
but they all talk to the single uh, to a single um, instance of the backend service. Okay. Um, so that's the general principles of how you uh, implement uh, features, whether they're, they're zoned or not, and how it was done. This is existing since uh, the beginning of um, QIVI. Um, in QIVI, uh, the one that's available now, so 1.1, uh, had uh, something called Q, uh, QIVI properties. So all the properties of objects, like uh, the current temperature or the fan speed or things like that, rather than being an actual value, there were an instance of something called QIVI property. Uh, the reasoning behind that is that for a lot of properties, you're going to have some meta information, like um, what the valid ranges are, the minimum, maximum, what the if it's discrete possible values, what they're going to be, whether value is actually available or not. Your car may not have uh, air conditioning at all. Okay, so the property uh, was this um, uh, QIVI property instance that stored the value as a Q variant. Uh, and had the other information like maximum uh, and minimum values or a list of available or possible values or whether the, the feature was actually, the, the property was actually available or not. Okay, uh, this has been deprecated in QIVI uh, 2.0, so the, it's still there, but um, we recommend that you don't use it. For several reasons, one, it's not type safe because all the values are stored in Q variants. Uh, the value here is a Q variant. Um, there's lots of overhead, so imagine you've got lots of features and they've got lots of properties. All of these derive from QIVI property, which is a Q object. You're going to allocate, you know, potentially thousands of them when your application starts up, um, which goes a, a lot of uh, overhead. And also, it was it came apparent that things like valid ranges or whether a value is available or not, tends to be uh, static information. It's not something that you really need to discover at runtime. Um, the car doesn't magically start to have air conditioning because uh, unless you're a very good engineer and can you know, retrofit, um, uh, retrofit uh, um, air conditioning into your car. So anyway, the idea was to remove that entire system. Uh, so you're left with having to write um, the regular classes that you would have to do normally. So create something that derives from the feature class, implement all the properties, all the uh, getters and setters, all the code that talks to the back end, and then having to implement your back end. All right, and then repeat that for each interface. Uh, it can get rather tedious, so um, one of the things we have been looking at is uh, can this be automated? All right, so we've been looking for uh, QIVI 2.0 for um, some code generation solutions. The idea being that we want to be able to declare a um, interface, something that has a name, has properties, signals, and slots, uh, maybe some associated data like enum values and things like that. Uh, maybe also some meta information about um, about the values like ranges and uh, zones and things like that. Uh, and then can we pass that data to actually completely or partially generate a valid front end and a or several valid back ends? Um, and so the idea is to look at code generation in order to do that. So what we've done uh, in order to do that is to use um, uh, another library called QFace. Okay, so if you Google it, QFace, the first hit is a Milesian boys band. Uh, that's not what we're talking about. Um, QFace is a library initially designed by uh, Pinagico. Um, it's a Python-based uh, solution which has essentially two components. One is an IDL where you can describe an interface and it comes with a parser um, in order to uh, read that IDL. 
and then it, it uh, builds a document model which then gets processed by a generator, so that's the second bit, um, that takes this document model and produces code, okay? Um, QFace in itself comes is sort of a generic QT uh, related um, solution for code generation. So it has nice things that it knows about signals, it knows about uh, invocables, it knows about properties and that kind of thing. Okay, so it's quite amenable to be reused um, uh, in our particular use case. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so it, it was a, a good candidate for that. Uh, QFace, the one that you can download, comes with a numbers of generator to spit out you know, uh, either a QML implementation of an interface or a Q object, C++ based uh, implementation of the code. Um, uh, that kind of thing. So what we have done in the context of QIVI is to take QFace uh, look at the IDL language, look how it is parsed, and then write custom generators that will essentially implement features, so all the front-end classes that we need, and services, which are all the back-end classes that we need for our plugins. Um, in order to do that, um, the, um, the generation is controlled using templates. Okay, again, this is done all uh, from a Python library, uh, using Jinja uh, templates and it just walks the document model and creates um, files for the generator. So if we start a very simple uh, example, um, you can define a module here with an interface uh, that uh, has uh, some properties like a message and a status. It has some uh, operations uh, like an echo, which will basically print out a message, and it'll, it can also have signals, so it can broadcast some information. Uh, might also have some helper enums like that. Now, if you look at this interface, uh, if you think about QT, um, it's actually fairly easy to see how this would eventually map to a QT implementation, where you could derive from Q object, have all those Q properties, the setters, the getters, the operations would map nicely to Q invocables, uh, the types, so the string would map to Q string, things like that. Uh, signals, of course, would just map as it is, that kind of thing. So it's quite intuitive to see how easy it is to convert the Q face interface to an actual implementation. Um, this is just you know, details about the grammar. Uh, important things in there is the built-in types that it supports, which is a relatively small subset of the types you might expect, but it tends to be enough for um, uh, most cases. It also supports models uh, and lists, although we don't use them in the context of QIVI. Uh, another really nice uh, feature about it is that this supports structured uh, Java talk syntax uh, comments. Uh, that, so if you put them in an IDL, you can actually write your generator so that those comments get carried through the generated code. So effectively, you also generate a doc generating documented code, which is a, a real plus when you're going to redistribute that through your organization. Um, another feature of the IDL is annotation. Now, you can't possibly, or you, or you could, but you might not want to, you can design um, uh, you, you might want to provide information about uh, your different classes, your different interfaces, about some of the properties. Um, and in order to do that, uh, rather than having it um, losing language, IDL language features, there's kind of a generic system called annotations. So anything with this at symbol uh, gets attached to whatever the symbol after it, um, the keyword after it is. So here I'm adding annotations to the uh, echo interface saying this might be a singleton, or uh, if there's if the echo has a configuration, it might be the port uh, number so and so. Okay, these annotation can be either single values or they can be uh, compound values, and in the case of compound values, they use the YAML uh, syntax. Uh, they can also be defined externally to the uh, QFace file uh, using again a YAML file. Now these are really just annotations you put in your IDL. 
It doesn't change anything about uh, the language itself, but uh, it's something that can be picked up by the generator in order to customize what code gets uh, produced. Um, <clears throat> so in the context of QIVI, for example, you can define entire modules uh, using a single uh, QFace file. Um, so if I open here, one of the things, so I mentioned earlier on that QIVI was prov providing reference implementations for how you can, you can use it. So in this case, there's a vehicle, vehicle function uh, module that comes with QIVI, which implement things like um, climate control and um, uh, window control. And then basically what we've done in this case is that we've defined this module entirely in a Q, uh, Q phase uh, file. And so we define the module, there's some annotations here that are, um, uh, that cover the entire module. So um, I don't know if you can read this in the back or if I need to make it a bit bigger. But some of the annotations make a uh, uh, relative sense as this if, when we're going to generate the code, this is the name of the module that you're going to have to use from QML in order to create an instance of that class, okay? Or to import sorry the symbols for that for that module. Uh, and also here, if you have a particular interface, uh, so this is going to eventually generate a C++ code that implements this. But if you want to create an instance of it in QML, you probably don't want to use QIVI QML control. So that's a nice. QML type to be used, okay? Um, and then we're defining properties. You can also customize things like uh, what the getter name might be. Um, there's also the setter name, and then there's meta information like range values, minimum, maximum. There's some of them further on that have, uh, yeah, domains, so valid values uh, for uh, a specific um, property, um, that kind of thing, and then you can also have uh, enums or flags that are defined externally to the to the class. All right. Um, so there's lots of things uh, already in here, including all the documentation um, annotations. You can also define in an external file using a YAML file with the same uh, base name. So it's the, these two files. Uh, here, uh, and that's basically uh, providing extra configuration for some of the properties, something you might not want to put in line inside your interface because it makes it less uh, readable and it's only relevant for the, um, really relevant for the generator, not for somebody who's just looking at your interface. Okay, so in this case, the entire uh, I vehicle function module is generated from this um, QFace file. That's true for the front end, and it's also true for the back end. So the front end uh, class gets generated from that, and the kind of code you're going to be looking at is going to be something like, yeah, the climate control class. This is my build folder. Um, for QIVI, and it's basically generated me um, a code. That's the code that you normally would be writing yourself uh, were you going to implement QIVI principles, okay? So it's going to generate all these properties with all the right um, uh, declaration that are needed, all the um, setters um, and the getters, all the change signals and all of that. And it's also going to generate a lot of the machinery that's needed for the front end, the back end to talk to each other. Okay, so this is all these uh, on these private classes, um, the um, the front end class listening to changes from the back end. All that gets generated for you. Uh, and similarly, the header. There's an implement implementation file, and so on. Okay. Um, so how this works is that uh, the generator will parse the uh, declaration in the interface and then it will just walk through the document uh, model to generate the files. Um, 
the things that need to be generated are basically controlled by a, uh, a template document. So there's a folder of templates, and there's one YAML file that describes uh, for an exam for an interface ex uh, class uh, inside your document model, generate these files. For a struct, generate these files, and so on. So typically, there's a header and then CPP, and maybe a private header, and so on. Um, and then what uh, happens is that you call the uh, generator, you tell it which format you want to use. So the format is which set of templates need to be used. You pass it the QFace file and the output directory, which is typically the build folder. Um, and what we have done in uh, QIVI is that we've provided a number of default templates. So that the front end class that derives what I was, that was producing what I was just showing, the uh, abstract feature derived classes or zoned features. There's a backend simulator that creates um, the backend classes, the backend plugin, uh, and there's a control panel that I'll talk about in a little bit. So um, in the case of generating the, the backend, uh, if I go back to uh, my build folder, so we're producing a plugin for the backend instance, uh, and then we are producing this code, which basically uh, implements the climate control uh, abstract interface that's defined uh, also by the uh, QFace file, file, and then it implements all the setters uh, and all the actual data storage uh, for those values. Um, and what it does basically for the backend side of it, now normally you in, for your application, you would start with um, the abstract base class uh, and just override the, uh, the pure virtual functions and implement all the data storage and all the code that talks to your car. In this case, this is generating a simulator backend, so it, ha it implements the actual storage of data. Uh, and it goes actually one step further, is that if you've properly annotated your properties with things like rain value, range values, it will actually generate code that implements those checks. All right, so if I was going to have a very quick look at the implementation of the backend, um, it has all the, it picks up also all the default values for the various properties from annotations uh, inside the um, interface file. Um, it implements all the mechanics of the front end of the back end having to talk to each other. And uh, if the values have, uh, like the fan speed has a maximum, uh, a maximum value, so it will actually go and implement the code that checks whether this, um, the value that it receives is actually within range. Okay? So this is basically a simulator uh, backend. This is not something that actually talks to your car, but it's kind of useful to use if you're developing your application. Uh, you already have a fully implemented backend that's ready to work and that will behave in a similar way um, that your um, real car will, would, uh, would behave. And it's also completely documented based on what's in the, in the interface. All right. Um, <clears throat> so if you specified this meta information about properties, the generated code from the back end will implement all those tests. And then the uh, front end class will also have a record in the form of a JSON data structure about all of these values. The thing here, the idea here is that other applications can then at runtime come and query this data uh, and extract uh, that information to make their own checks. All right? It's pretty pretty here in the actual generated code. It's one big massive line of string of text because it's 2017, but uh, mock doesn't support um, C++ 11 raw strings, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> Another thing that we've done uh, is the QMake integration. 
So when I talked about the generator just a couple of slides before, you have to call some uh, Python script to actually generate the code. What we did is that we've actually um, changed QMake or added features to QMake so that this can completely be driven from your project file. And if I go back to the actual projects, um, my vehicle functions uh, project here, um, yeah, that's my plugin. That's my example. Yes, so that's my, um, yes, that's the uh, generation, uh, the module for that generates the front end interface for the climate control example. So it takes a QFace source with the, um, uh, the name of the QFace file. Uh, it will, by default, generate a front-end uh, template. So it's ignored here. And there's a, pun there's a control here that says, what's the name of the QT module that's actually been generated? Because we need that um, at various places in the generated code. OK, so this is basically generating an entire QT module uh, from a single QFace file. So there's zero lines of C++ in the actual project. It's all generated from the QFace file. That's the, the front-end bit. The uh, back-end bit uh, is very similar. There's also the QFace source, so we're using the same uh, input QFace. We are generating a back-end interface for it. Um, but we want to customize it a little bit, okay? So we're actually adding uh, our own source uh, source code in this case to implement extra things. The uh, things that get implemented is uh, like, for example, for example, for Windows, when you ask to them to be opened or closed, it's not a on-off switch. You know, they just ask for a window to be opened, and it goes down, and a few seconds later it will be opened. So basically, this time of thing is. Um, how you uh, implement this. And of course, when you're going to want to implement your own code to talk to your actual devices, you're going to want to customize the back end. Okay? So you can do that either by writing your completely your own or you can derive from the generated code. So this is what it does in this case. All right. Um, in order to uh, be able to uh, uh, do this uh, functionality of not using the official, um, the official oops, classes, but actually deriving uh, from um, the generated code, but deriving from the generated code, you need to make sure that the instancing happens properly, uh, and there's just a way of providing a specific function that will get called to create the instances. Um, another thing you can do if you want to generate even more of the code, um, for example, you might have your entire backend will have a regular pattern of, for example, using DBus to connect to some service and things like that. So you might have features that you might be able to generate uh, using uh, extra uh, annotations in the QFace file and then use your custom set of template. So the variable, the QFace source variable in the temp can actually point to a, an actual folder of templates, which is not the one we provide, but it's something that you would take and then you would tweak them to change the code that gets generated. Um, another thing that's quite nice about uh, things coming with IVI is the integration with Qt Simulator. So Qt Simulator is a library uh, that uh, comes, I believe it comes from uh, boot to Qt, uh, and it's not to be uh, uh, confused with some of the other uh, simulation-related uh, older libraries. Uh, but basically what it does is a way of providing um, uh, simulated values uh, for classes. So it's used, for example, in the location plugin to simulate GPS positions, um, that kind of thing. Now, what we do in this particular case is that there's an extra um, template that we support called Control Panel. Um, and what that does is generate an interface, uh, an, an application that can be used to control a, a simulated backend 
Um, so you launch your application, you launch this simulator, and then you can change the simulated backend and observe how your application behaves. Okay? So it's a way of uh, changing this, um, the backend without um, it, it, it being completely uh, implemented in order to ma make sure that your application behavior is, uh, is correct. So it basically generates a uh, Qt Quick Controls 2 uh, application for um, the, the, the back end, and you can see all the properties. If they had signals, then you could actually click a button that would emit a signal from the back end uh, uh, via the simulator and so on. In this case, so it has, the climate control has two interfaces, so it has two tabs, one for climate control and one for window control. All right, and quickly, because we are um, running out of time, the, um, the last thing is that the generated code actually supports um, overriding. So um, what you can do is register a class which basically uh, steps in between the communication between the front end and the back end and uh, basically will override the communication so that it, you can change it so that the value returned uh, to the front end is not the one that the back end actually reports um, and uh, the other way around uh, it can intercept um, changes from the front end. This is actually integrated in Gamma Ray um, so Gamma Ray uh, has a number of uh, plugins, there's one for Qt IVI that will sort of in the, look at your, introspect your application, find all the classes that um, uh, implement IVI features, uh, and for each of them it will uh, list all the properties, uh, the current value, and make this uh, editable. Uh, um, and also overridable. So if one of these override checkboxes t is ticked, that means that the value doesn't make it to the back end, it's just a gamma ray that's um, uh, controlling, uh, controlling the value, okay? Main reason why you would want to do that is be able, for example, to change the fan speed from your application um, and if it's overridden here, it would not actually go and uh, talk, talk to the back end at all. <clears throat> okay, so that's all including QIVI. It's also quite useful to go and uh, find, uh, in the case of zoned interface, this is the overall interface for uh, the, the, the car, and then there's specific interfaces for real. If it was a real application, it could scroll down to uh, um, the driver uh, or the, the passenger seat. All right, so this is what Gamma Ray does, uh, is has this IVI module to let you override these, uh, these uh, properties. The f technology for doing that is actually part of the generated code and of the QIVI uh, base class, and there's a generic overrider class that uh, you can actually use to integrate in your own applications if you wanted to. And that's basically all that I wanted to talk about this time. I'll take your questions now. Yes. Uh, what configuration uh, this process? Does this process mean that the whole problem, all the problems can be solved on the standard side, and I would never have to change the code in a way that would be associated with the standard code? Um, well, in, tech, uh, in the most of the examples that we've written now, Usually the uh, front-end classes remain completely um, generated uh, and we use that over, over time. It's less clear that uh, this is going to be really useful for the back-end side. So the back-end simulator that gets produced is really useful because that lets you start writing your application without having a real car or a real device uh, there for, with you. Now when you're going to start plugging plugging in your APIs and uh, talking to a real device, then you have to go and, you're going to have this, to change this code and add your own code that talks to the, the APIs of the, of, the, of the car. Once you've done these changes, either you do it by deriving the, um, from the uh, generated backend, or you write your own backend. In this case, you're not doing code generation yourself. And if the IDL changes, the breakage will come 
um, because your back end will not be uh, implementing. It's all based on vert abstract uh, virtual methods, so that will start breaking. Okay. So yeah, and typically the front end will remain com completely code generated, uh, but um, not necessarily the back end. Yeah. Well, a feature is much more small granularity. You know, it's climate control, or window control, or multimedia and things like that. And that's something that you would use a collection of these and integrate it within your application, like you would do a normal Qt application. Okay, if you start without any of this, uh, then you have to write your uh, a lot of code, and uh, this basically simplifies. It's just the feature pattern. Well, typically, you know, your cluster, your or your info, your entertainment system in inside your car. Uh, <laughs> I think was was, was there one over there? <laughs> Is the yes, yeah, it's uh, so the the it's part of Qt Automotive Suite, so it's. Uh, Governed by the same licensing uh, issues than the you know, rules than the rest of Q Automotive Suite, and QFace itself is just a sub project that we uh, we link to. Good. Let's give a big hand to Mike. Thank you.